dry. Dry in the beginning. Welcome to whiskey.com where fine spirits meet. My name is Lüning, Horst Lüning. I'm the master taster of whiskey.com and today, well, we have some theory. Uh, my cask is empty. Really? No, not really. I brought this 37 years old Port Allen here for my cask and it's the holy grail of the whiskey industry. Port Allen's 16th release, a row of 16 uh, extremely valuable bottles today and well one of those bottles is here on my cask. Have a look on the label, natural cask strength, single malt whiskey established 1825, uh, Port Allen distillery in Port Allen, the small harbor at the south coast of Isla and release limited edition numbered bottle only 2940 bottles in 2016 aged 37 years distilled in 1978 uh, 55.2 ABV so this is well the older the Port Allen whiskey gets or the later the release is the older the whiskey becomes, of course, because there's no new whiskey coming through and the smaller the batches, the releases are. In the beginning, third release, I think, was a, quite a huge one with over 20,000 bottles, probably. So five uh, digit numbers, figures. And uh, now they are down to 2,940 and the prices rose steeply and today they are well over 3000 euros dollars pounds per bottle per bottle and if you think that only a fourth of the volume is left over after such a long period of time in the cast due to the angel's share uh, the last uh, newsletter from whiskey.com uh, contained a story about the angel's share um, so probably you would like to subscribe to our newsletter on whiskey.com and uh, well only a fourth of the volume of the cask is left over then 2940 bottles are still dozens of casks still there well but they extended the reach of these bottles uh, by reducing the number of bottles per release and of course <laughs> increasing the price per bottle so it lasts longer but it costs extremely more and here is the gem here is the holy grail of the whiskey industry um, and of course thank you very much for the distributor i got a sample for it i would never dare to open such an expensive bottle uh, I remember that I had s some older Port Allen's third release probably and I was not impressed no not at all and I was in a whiskey fair in around 2003 or 2004 and there was an independent bottling of Port Allen and well <laughs> I dumped the whiskey uh, after the first sip <laughs> into a pot of flowers. Sorry about that. Um, Port Allen was a whiskey distillery extreme or on purpose for the blended whiskey industry. They produced a lot of whiskey, whiskey poured out and they had a lot of different types of whiskies. The quality was changing and uh, with the time um, the extremely smoky whiskies um, mature older and reduce this pungency, this extreme smokiness. They reduce it and build out some complexity. Um, and uh, when the Port Allen was younger, this pungency and this extreme smokiness was not my thing. No, not at all. <clears throat> so I have quite a bit of skepticism uh, tasting this bottle. Uh, we'll see how it how it works. 
a self-assured, well-integrated and hugely complex port Allen in which subtlety is all with an effortless balance of sweet fruit notes, deeper sapid tones, citrus, honey, smoke, fire and oak. This is the oldest Port Allen ever released and in the words of one taster, these old Port Allens get better and better. I hope so. 37 years old natural cast strength, it's 55.2, so there will be a little dilution by me. A limited edition natural cast strength single malt from Port Allen, a closed distillery on the Isle of Isla, now very rare and highly sought after at this age. 16th of a limited series of annual releases, the oldest Port Allen ever released. They said that already. Annual allocation ensures availability of this irreplaceable malt for only a little longer. So there will be a 17th release, probably an 18th release, but if we reach a 20th release, I dare. From refill American oak hogshead and refill European oak, but filled in 1978. So all those old sucked out casts are used for this bottling. Well, um, the older whiskey is, the better you use refill casts because the very intense aromas a cast is able to deliver over the whole uh, usage cycle, uh, then this might be too much for a whiskey. I had some 50, 55 years old whiskies here on my cask from first fill ex sherry, European sherry casks, and there was little left of the distillery character at all. So most of it was cask. Um, just 2,940 individual numbered bottles worldwide from specialist retailers only. Of course, registered retail selling price 2,500 pounds per bottle. So in Central Europe, prices are well above 3,000 euros. And in the US, no idea if those bottles really reach the final destination at all. Earlier and far larger releases in this series now change hands among collectors for large sums. I know a collector who possesses all annual releases in a row and the rare malt uh, bottlings as well. The rare malts were the successors of the Flora and Fauna series. The Flora and Fauna series started quite early, I think in the late 80s. And uh, then they were extended to a cast strength series of the flora and fauna, which was only available for a very short time. And then the rare malts uh, came on the market and the Port Allen in the rare malt series was among 50 euros <laughs> in 95, 96. So it was really, really cheap then. And today, whoa! 60 times as much, yeah. This is a rise in price. The Appearance Polished Teak is a brown bottle. No idea. Well, the small one shows, well, dark gold teak, probably. Teak for me has a little reddish influence and this one is more golden, dark golden. Sophisticated nose and Understated. <laughs> well, I don't know yet. Dry overall, opening with distant faint smoke before a wave of famous, famous sweet and smoky notes, among which hints of hessian and warm wood are all that suggests great age. Well, the longer a whiskey matures, the more of the oak aroma is in the whiskey. The distant smoke soon grows closer and more fragrant, while above it drifts pleasing sweet aromas of honey cured smoke meats. So you have meat, typically ham, then you cure it with a uh, honey sauce and then you put it uh, into the smoking chamber and after you take it out after a few weeks, this should be the aroma. Or root vegetable, yeah. Through all this, a fresh cleansing note rises to we with sweet mint and sharp citrus. Winey hints too. Finally, smooth dark cocoa, some vanilla and more wood smoke. With water, first sweet, then more muted and savoring. Though later, a fruity clarity sweetly returns. 
palate, wonderfully, wonderful at natural strength, sweet, prickly and drying with a great mix of wood ash. Wood ash. Burnt jam tarts. Yeah, trying to cook or bake. Trickle toffee and caramelized orange. Then yet more all pervading smoke with a spicy herbal complex featuring cloves. Water makes things cooler and milder, yet doesn't alter the well-balanced flavor profile. Dark toffee first, then smoked meats, kippers, kippers, ash and cleansing fennels. Kippers? That's smoked herring, isn't it? I once said, <laughs> you have to finish in a herring's cask. <laughs> yeah, no kippers. Is this really herring? I have no idea. No. Long cooling complex finish, drying yet also coating, instantly appetizing with toffee apple burnt toast, burnt again. Lemon zest, ripe and red apples and burnt plum tart again, burnt. Deeply herbal and heavy wood smoke. Here you can see the pot stills of Port Allen and I think they were removed some 10 years ago, I think, yeah, probably. They are huge. They were built for the blended whiskey industry. Huge. Port Allen was established as a malt mill on Isla, famous south coast in 1825. It developed into a major distillery under John Ramsay, trading directly with North America. The warehouses Ramsay built also still exist and are listed buildings today, so it's natural heritage. Uh, the rest of the distillery, I think, was, was torn down. In 1967, the distillery was rebuilt, uh, and there was a very long time which, in which the distillery stood still, uh, producing through the 1970s and closing in 1983 in the big British recession. The Port L name is kept alive by the island's maltings. Well, the island maltings produce the malts for the Diageo distilleries on Isla, which is uh, Kalila and Lagavulin. And uh, when the winds are very strong and uh, the supply ships aren't able to reach the other distilleries, then Port Allen also supplies uh, the maltings. Uh, the malts for the other distilleries. There's some contracts for this helping out. Yeah, so that's it. And now we're going to taste Port Allen, 37 years old, 16th release and smokiness. Not at the cork, at the screw cap. Yeah, and smokiness. So this is a lot of smoke for 37 years. I have not in thought about that, no. And uh, yeah, 55.2 is a little bit too much for me. Uh, this is the last one today, but again, I'm not willing to taste more than 53. So several years ago, 50 was the limit. And then, well, I tried 51. Yeah, 52. And today I'm at 53. Uh, but 55 is too much for me. As they said, if you dilute with a little water, then uh, the balance still stays the same. Dry. Dry in the beginning. Not too smoky, but smoke rises stronger. And then, well, this smoked meat is there. But the honey, hmm, not yet. The mint and the citrus or the citron is there. And in the back there should be cocoa and vanilla. No, not at all. Those casks are re reused and mm, not too much of vanilla, caramel or cocoa. No, dry, smoky, some herbal influence, oakiness of course, and the smoked ham. That's it. Yeah. Now I have a little, just a few drops of water. Now I'm still above 50, I think. Yes. <clears throat> I do not like those pipette and, and calculate and put a few drops in it and so on. No, this is a 
a personal feeling, a, a mood of today, and well, if there are two, two drops more in it, who cares? This is whiskey, this is no, no fixed science. If you would like to have science, then have a look at the science tab on whiskey.com, where I took some scientific investigation about chill filtering. Opens a little bit up, more fruit, mint. That really does not change a lot with water, no. Mm-hmm. Mm. Sweet. First, prickling, yeah, and then dry. And then it said chaffee, caramelized oranges, no. Tarts, no. Um, cloves, yes, a little bit. Oranges appearing. Smokiness, yes, of course, covering my mouth. Complex, long aftertaste. Herbal aftertaste. But those apple and plum tart, nope, nope. Not at all, and not burnt. Smoking is still there. Yeah, I had that one before uh, with a little more water. And please do not add too much water. Here I have a little less water and the taste is a lot better than with a little more water. Perhaps, I think they said in that, or in the, in the cover, that is also possible to have it neat. Oh, there sentences, sentences in it. Yeah. Wood smoke, very smooth on the palate. No! Yes, these old tannins are in, but there's no bitterness in the aftertaste. No, so the amount of uh, refill butts might be quite low. The finish is warming, smoky and gently aromatic, with notes of sandalwood and incense. Sandalwood, probably, yeah. Here we go, still two sips to go. Mm -hmm. After half a bottle, you will find out how it tastes. No, uh, it just adds up all those aromas and probably now the, the vanilla and the caramel shows up a little bit after all. Yeah, it adds up from, from, from sip to sip. Orange is stronger. Carol Mize, no, not that sweet. Cloves, again, yeah. So if you have uh, cloves uh, spiked into oranges for Christmas, that's it, yeah. Whenever you, uh, you drained your whiskey, then uh, your mind suggests this has to be good because you swallowed and then there are again positive signs through your uh, uh, aroma uh, receptors in your nose and this goes straight through uh, the bottom of your skull brain into your brain to the olfactory center where you can remember or you, you can divide all those aromas and you memorize uh, these aromas in your mm, limbic system I think yeah so wonderful uh, if you swallow the first sip then the aromas intensify from the back to your nose and 
Well, after a second and a third uh, sip, this whiskey increases a lot in, uh, yeah, in, in pleasurable taste. Yeah. So just the first one was, mm, yeah, just the first one. But this one, after finishing uh, this small dram, yes, uh, a good one, but the price is far too steep for the amount of taste you receive. There's a lot of collector's charge on top of that. So the price the collectors are able to make from this bottle is a lot of that is already <laughs> collected by the distillery or by the uh, proprietors of the distillery. Yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned. There's more to come. I don't know if this year another bottle of this caliber uh, will arrive here. Mm. Stay tuned, you will see, there's more to come.